We hand over to George Hamilton now for the excitement of Aintree and the drama of the Irish Master Snooker quarterfinals. Good afternoon to you. A warm welcome if you're joining us for the first time. We've been here for the afternoon with Goff Snooker and Aintree Racing. And the one piece of business that we have to clear up, first of all, is the result of the 3.45 at Aintree, which we showed you on Network 2. And there it is. First number 11, GA, at 66 to 1. Second number 24, raised an argument at 11 to 1. 12, Glenavy at 20 to 1 was third. The favourite was number 28, Rushing Wild at 9 to 4. And one non runner, number 5. So 29 ran in that Martel Fox Hunters chase, which was quite a race. But now we're going back to the snooker at Goffs. It's Steve Davis, the defending champion, against Ken Doherty. It's two frames to nil to Doherty. They're at the table now, ready to begin the third. It's Davis to break. Steve Davis gets frame three away. Well, he's left a red on there, but the pink and black are not too useful. And there doesn't seem to be a path to get the cue ball out for anything else, so. One. That didn't finish up too great. Probably a little tickle behind the green here. Might pot it in the middle pocket if he can get up reasonably onto a red. Steve attempting to free the black there, and he's done that, but unfortunately didn't finish up on a red. Got a long one into the bulk pocket, but that's not easy. Now things not going smoothly for Steve Davis. Seems a little out of sorts with himself. Ten. Steve Davis.
some generous applause there for Ken Doherty, but this is quite a reasonable punt. Steve Davis used to knock these in with monotonous regularity, but they're not going in this afternoon. I think John will agree that uh, so many matches depend on who's knocking in the long reds. Developed now into one of those upside down frames where the safety zone is the top cushion. Three reds in the lower half of the table, so can't go down there any longer. on the cushion, which uh, means he doesn't have complete access to the cue ball. It's about as much as he could have done with it, I think. This is far from easy. Look what he's going to leave on if he misses it. And then he goes. <laughs> and on the black. seeing the real Steve Davis. He really is not showing the tremendous form he has shown over the years. He's missing some of the shots by quite a margin, which is quite unlike him. opportunity that was as well in two minds there Ken he could have played to get onto the pink or the black eventually decided on the black I forgot to put the red Good table to run up a few points on.
30. Eighty. Now, thirty six points in front now. Twenty five. Should be a lot more to come. Twenty-six. And how Ken Doherty must be regretting that comparatively easy red into the centre pocket, which led to all this. Thirty-one. I've run out of position now. Can pop the blue into the middle, but not as easy as it should have been. Forty-three. Uh, Fifty-nine points in front, and that's exactly what's on the table at the moment. If four blacks were taken with the four reds, that bit academic because Steve is still so during long. 49. 53. Fifty-four. 
54, Steve Davis. And the frame. Two frames for one to Ken Burnaby. So there you are. We'll have more snooker for you a little later on, but it's time to get back to entry. Our next race is the 420, the Oddpins Handicap Hurdle. I have news of a non-runner, number nine, Lake Terrine. The favourite is Dusty Miller at 9-2. Dara Doon at 5-1 is the second favourite. And here they are assembling for the start. He came from good at Cheltenham, and by golly, he did come good there too. Jamie Osborne, who had such a terrific Cheltenham, ended up the Ritz Club trophy winner there for the leading rider. And five winners to his credit. Had a crashing fall here yesterday and very pleased to be back where he is. It was a fine win at Cheltenham. He's 9-2 to two favourite here, but do remember the course is totally different. Cheltenham stiff. This hurdle track here, very fast and probably the easiest in the country. It's a very flat sort of track. Does he need a sharp horse who can keep up with the, in the pace of it? It's uh, totally different to Cheltenham, as you say, Richard. It doesn't require half the stamina. The Martin Pipes runner, Say Paris there, just jogging around. Peter Skew on board. Say Paris was a good horse. John Joe uh, produced him, bought him from Paddy Mullins. He moved to Martin Pipe. He's won the Scottish champion hurdle, and he was the 89-90 winner of the Martel hurdle here. So he knows his way around. I think that he's not fully tuned up to run here. Not sure that Martin was 100% certain that he'd got him uh, zinging for first time. You don't see many horses from Martin's yard, even if they've been off three years, that will need a race. But just looking at his tummy, Bill, I'd say the evaluation is correct. By Martin Pipe standards, you would say that, because they do look fit. There's not an ounce of flesh on them, because they are 100% trained to the day. This horse has been off with a bit of lameness. He could just need the run today, though. Decent horse, though, winner of the uh, Scottish champion hurdle. He's a very good horse, but maybe today we best to keep a watching brief on him. Number one, now old Randolph Place, been going around for years, isn't he? He runs in the colours of the Edinburgh Woolen Mill Limited, and they, of course, won the big one over the big fences yesterday with the Antarctics. He's eight to one from sevens. And Neil Doughty on board. Well, oh, Neil, every time we've seen shots of him from the weighing room, he's been scoffing his face. I hope he hasn't uh, upset his inner workings for this. Lovely big horse, though. Smashing horse. The only shame about this horse uh, is just literally he, he doesn't like fences. He'd be a grand sort of chaser but he doesn't like fences, so he has to stay over hurdles, and as you say, he's getting on a bit. He might just be getting a bit slow for winning in this sort of company, but as you say, grand sort of horse. He's got 11.10, he's top weight here, but I still think he'll put up a good show. He, he does run well. Number 11 is Dara Doon in the reddish colours with the white epaulettes, Bonham Mackey's colours, Reg Acres trains, and this one only carries 10-5. Richard Dunwoody on board. Now, this one could just be ahead of the handicap, but Bill has come good and won his last two. Yes, good sort of horse, Reg Acres, definitely on the upgrade. He is actually £5 worse off for a half-length with Dusty Miller, so we'll have to see how they go for that. And all getting keen again. I must say the jockeys are certainly... You can hear sounded like Steve Smith Eccles on Father Time saying that he had been kicked there. That's Steve nearest to us, and they'll want to assert that he's all right before they let them go. But they're quite amazed how the jock is getting so keen in every race here. It's because the track's so fast, they don't want to miss the break, but they've got their noses over the tapes. There's no way that Keith Brown will let them go when they're standing like that. It was suggested to me yesterday by one of our uh, APs, Jerry Morrison, that they ought to line up a yard away from the tape, put a, a sawdust uh, line across the course, and I think that Jerry has got a good point there because people are getting far too keen. It can't be long before the off. Let's go to Peter. I was guessed just uh, being a little bit reluctant at the moment. This looks like it in there away. Father Time in the early stages with Dustin Miller and the top weight, Randolph Place right up there too, an Imperial Brush on the outside as they come to the first. Spanish Serpent is right up with them too. And a faller there is uh, Mariner's Mirror. Mariner's Mirror has gone at the first and racing towards the second. It's Randolph Place right up with the lead with Father Time on the near side. And Welshman right up with them too, then Spanish Servant and Dusty Miller. Imperial Brush not far off the lead as they swing left-handed. Father Time on the inside of Imperial Brush on the outer and then Randolph Place. It's Imperial Brush towards the outside on the inside Father Time. Then comes Randolph Place and behind them Welshman. A little gap then to Dara Doon and Dusty Miller. 
and then Shannon Glenn as Imperial Brush leads them around this turn into the straight on the first circuit. Imperial Brush from Welshman and Father Time over on the far side. Randolph plays well up there, then Shannon Glenn. Behind them, Spanish Servant. They jump the third. Come down to the next, Imperial Brush from Father Time and Randolph Place and Welshman. Then Shannon Glenn, Dusty Miller over on.